Welcome back to the lead. I'm Jake Tapper. Now for some politics. They stood in the president's own driveway and slammed his leadership on Syria. After a meeting at the White House today, Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham were very clear about the fact that they want to see more action, more planning, and more clarity from President Obama. We don't want endless war. John and I, John knows better than anybody, war is a terrible thing. We want sustainable security. And Syria is a cancer that's growing in the region. And for two years, the president has allowed this to become, quite frankly, a debacle. Let's bring in our panel, senior editor for the National Review, Ramesh Panuru, CNN political contributor and Democratic strategist Hillary Rosen, and CNN senior political analyst Ron Brownstein. First thing I, I will have to say is, I can't think of a time, and Ron, you, you were the one that brought this up, where a, a cabinet and a White House staff was probably as surprised by the president's decision as Saturday or Friday night after the president decided, okay, we're going to do strikes, or I want to do strikes, but we're going to let Congress do it. Nobody in the national security team had been planning on that. Uh, I mean, are they, I, they're not going to admit it to anybody, but you yeah. have to believe that they're not delighted with that. Look, you know... He is Look, the president. This is, this is the president that was elected on the anti-war platform. Let's never mm, forget anti -Iraq that. Anti-Iraq war. Anti-Iraq yeah. war in 2008. Let's, like, never, ever forget that. And, and so I think this kind of, I, I kind of want to do this, but I'd really like it if you guys came along with me. I mean, th that's sort of the way that progressives tend to feel about going to war and, and, and taking military action, it's not a comfortable thing to do. And I think, uh, you know, McCain was right in one thing. What he was right in was that there's been a hesitancy in the administration to go this far. But what he's wrong about is that it's not because Barack Obama hasn't been a good leader. It's because Barack Obama has had the priority to be cautious about taking these kinds of steps. That's what his... That's what he was elected for. And, and how about that? How about that argument? He's not being weak. He's, 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 we should all be ambivalent about war. We should all be cautious about using use of force. What do you make of that argument? Well, I think that, uh, you know, it, it reflects the fact that there are some good arguments on all sides of this. Unfortunately, if you split the difference with those arguments, you could end up with something that doesn't make any strategic sense. And that, I think, is one of the things that is going to cause a lot of reluctance on the part of Congress to vote for this because they don't see what the strategic objective is. Ultimately, Ron, does the president's own ambivalence about this, even though he, you know, half of his statement on Saturday was very strong, uh, does that help him sell it to Democrats? Or does that make it more difficult? That's a really good question. Look, I think the ambivalence is very real. It's not only here. We saw it in the U.K. It's the end of a 20-year cycle. I mean, we went from Bosnia to Kosovo to Afghanistan to Iraq, believing that U.S. force could move the world in the direction that we wanted to see it go. And in Iraq, now Egypt, uh, I think we've seen that, you know, very much. And in Egypt's case, not only force, but just intervention, we've seen that very much uh, called into question. And I think Syria is at the end, or the ambivalence we're seeing at Syria is really the kind of rise and fall of the belief in the efficacy of our ability to change these societies in the way that we want. So ambivalence, I think, Jake, is embedded in this decision here and everywhere else and every other country that is considering it. And yes, I do think that his ambivalence is at least a selling point with Democrats because it suggests that he is not going to go too far, that he wants to make this limited. And of course, that becomes a problem with a McCain or a Graham on the other side. But they are no longer, I think, the majority opinion, even in the Republican Party, yeah. which has been affected by the same There's changes that I'm describing. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I want to get Ramesh to, on to weigh in on that, and then I'll get to you, mm -hmm. Hillary, is that, is that we are seeing the, I don't want to call them isolationist, but the, the non-interventionists in the Republican Party really have a moment this year uh, in the House when it come to the, came to the NSA vote. And, and, when, and you hear Rand Paul is a go-to voice on this. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that, what, what is that a reflection of? I, I think there's no question that the non-interventionist side of the argument has been gaining adherence among Republicans. But this vote is, I think, gonna, there are going to be no votes from Republicans who are interventionists, <clears throat> who are internationals, but who just don't think this mission makes sense. And Hillary, you're worried President Obama might lose this vote. I mean, you, you don't think he will, but you're worried it could happen. Yeah, but, you know, this is what I think will happen now, having seen John McCain and Lindsey Graham go out with kind of this, you know, on the one hand, on the other, and this sort of backhanded compliment of the president today in terms of where he was going. I didn't we're, hear a compliment, but okay. Well, that he was going to do the right thing right. In, in taking action. We're going to have, you know, because the president asked for it, um, four or five days of Republicans bashing of the president. 
they're going to they're going to say, oh, I believe in Syria, but you know this president hasn't led, he hasn't done this, he hasn't done that, and that's going to coalesce Democrats around the president. And so I think it's what's going to happen is they're going to get enough votes, is my prediction, from Democrats who trust the president to go to a limited degree, and Republicans who are more internationalists and, and who see the very real issue that Syria is kind of the, the stalking horse for worries about Iran. All right. So I think that coalition is going to end up giving him the vote. Thank you so much, Hillary Rosen, Ramesh Panuwa, Ron Brownstein. Great panel. We'll have you guys back again soon. Coming up on the lead, President Obama's administration was supposed to signal a paradigm shift in U.S. relations with the Arab world. By now, he should have built up loads of political capital. So why is this appeal for Syrian action falling somewhat flat in the Middle East?